Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Rachel, I'm fired up. I know. You are. What What happened? You having a good day? I'm happy for you, you. Let me tell you why I'm fired up. Okay. In a good or a bad way? In a good way. Okay. Um, Let me tell you why I'm fired up. So I'm here at the Conrad Hotel. Oh, I already know it's nice. I'm here at the I'm here in the Conrad Wait. Hotel in DC. Fan. What? We've talked about this. We have to do it. Why? Oh, we I have just to do hate it. You I, give it out your location. Fine. I have to give the people at the Conrad Hotel their props. I am feeling great. Let me tell you what happened. And this is I want everybody to still pay attention for a second this morning i wake up i'm leaving atlanta i gotta come to dc i'm missing the family i want to get back to Kalik. i want to get back to the dog and, and, and i'm i'm like god damn got another city gotta get up for an event tomorrow boom gotta come back right not feeling so great i get there short flight from atlanta to dc get mm-hmm. there you know, the, 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 the car is not there, it's all of this stuff. It's just, it's travel snafus, the first world problems, all of that stuff. Like travel snafus, whatever, whatever. But by the time I get there, I'm beaten down. I'm like, yo, I don't even get a chance to take a real nap because as soon as I land, I got to turn around and do the podcast. Boom, 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 boom. Get to the Conrad. I've stayed here before. I stayed here the, the last time I was here. I come into the room at the Conrad Hotel. It's a great hotel. Yes. You know, and I'm looking around the room and I'm like, what's going on in the room? Because I see different pictures that are in the room here at Mm -hmm. the Conrad Hotel. Yeah. This is one of the pictures that I see. (laughs) (laughs) I see, I see, I see, I see this picture. Here at the Conrad Hotel, right? I see it on. Say it I see it, I, I see it on my uh, my nightstand, and then I look over on the table where I'm doing the podcast right now, and I see this picture. <laughs> and, and then I look on the TV, another picture of Mountain Lion, another picture of Mountain Lion, and I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" And I see this note. This note says, welcome to the Conrad Hotel, Washington, D.C., Van Lathan Jr. How do we know you love mountain lions and wolves so much, you ask? The answer is simple. One of us is a thought warrior. Have an amazing stay with us, Kiki and the front office team. I would like to give a gigantic shout out to Kiki and the front office team because I was having a tough, tired day. And I come in here and I'm surrounded by Mount Lion. They got Mount Lion <laughs> in the frame. They framed I, pictures of Mount Lion. Those might be gifts. You might, you should ask Kiki and them if you can take one, at least one of those home. That is so, I, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired that up. so nice. That was so, so amazing sweet. from the people uh, here at the greatest hotel in the world. Conrad Hotel, Washington, D.C., a.k.a. Mountain Lion Hotel. They have not, you guys, I promise you, I swear, they haven't spent any money with us. This is not an ad. This is just thought warriors doing thoughtful things. And it really, I laughed. You know what I mean? It was funny. It made me relax a little bit. And it was just really a fantastic thing. That really warms my heart. I like I it almost is making me turn a corner on Mount Lion because that is really special. And the segment resonates with so many. I love hearing from thought warriors in the wild. I heard from a thought warrior in the wild the other day what? who told me that you refer to House of Dragon as Hot D. Yeah, Hot D. Also said that you they they listened to the Ring of Verse, obviously, for them to get that reference, which I find hilarious. Never saw it that way until he said that. I am fired up about two things too that both have to do with you. What's up? Let's Tell just me. stay on a Van Lathan roll here. What's wrong? No, no, no. I'm fired up in a good way. Okay. One, 
just happened to be scrolling through Instagram and I saw the trailer for Hip Hop Homicides. homicides. Mm -hmm. I got to post it. You guys, 50, uh, 50 Cent posted it. it. I knew it was going to be good, but it does look really good. It's really cool to see you moving around, doing your thing. Juvenile, wasn't ready for that. Juvenile's in it, yeah. Wasn't ready for that. So anyways, just want to give you a shout out because that was pretty cool to see. I wasn't expecting to see that. Also, I love a good crossover. Watching Real Housewives of Salt Lake City last night. And who other popped up on Kiki and with the Housewives than your cousin, Big Baby? What? <laughs> I swear. I said, I go, Brian, he was in the room, he wasn't watching. I said, is that Glenn Davis? And sure enough, they had at the bottom Glenn Davis, AKA Big Baby. He was in what the, hell is the he episode. Doing on the Housewives. Apparently he's friends with one of the husbands. They had a birthday yeah. party, but he, but Very usually those people are in the background. Like right. he had a car on at the bottom. He was hanging out with one, flirting with one, hanging out with two more. He was in the mix. I he's expect him to thing. see on another episode. Love that oh. crossover. I, I, look, hey, Glenn is, Glenn is living his life here in his post NBA life. Big baby. Shout out to Glenn. Shout out to his dad. Shout out to my dad. Uh, but yeah, just fire, fire up. You guys, it doesn't take very much. It doesn't take very much to like do a nice thing. I just, it's just, I, I gotta do more nice things for people. I do because it's like think, it's think really about thoughtful. them. And then because because something happened to me today. Like I, I had to eat bad. Uh, I was in the airport, and so I had to go to the, to the, uh, to the airport Chick Fil A, and the girl at the airport Chick Fil A was delightfully rude to me. I actually mm. appreciated it because mm. I don't like the cult of Chick-fil-A niceness. I don't dig it. There was a, I, I got up there to get the Chick-fil-A, got a small meal, like little kid's meal just to tie me over. Okay, not trying to go crazy. And I'm like, uh, and she like, what kind of drink you want? I'm like, <laughs> God damn. I was like, water? And she was like, okay. And I was going to wait where they call your, uh, where they call your name. And she was like, don't yeah, go yeah. nowhere. Oh. And I was like, what? What kind of sauce? I'm like, shit. Ranch? She was like, now you could go. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went over there and I waited for the for the stuff. I was like, you know what? Good for you. Good for you, sister. Like, you know, you don't have to don't don't you don't need to be on that my pleasure bullshit. Nigga, take your chicken and go sit your fat ass down and eat it in shame in front of the whole airport. <laughs> You know what I mean? I needed that because I wasn't supposed to be eating that. The like, my pleasure. She, she, I, I wish you to say it though. You think you need this? Don't you think you need? No, some real no, 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 no. Not after. What'd you do today, class. Rachel? I worked. Worked. I had a couple of interviews. Went to the dermatologist. Sat in LA traffic. Came here. You know. As you say that, I feel like a new bump is like is. is don't is, touch is, it, man. Don't, don't touch the bump. You shouldn't touch it. You're not supposed no, to touch no, it. No, no, because it's oil. Like you don't want your dirty hands in the area. No, no, no. You got some rubbing alcohol? No, no. I'm on the road. So what? What do I need to do? Put something. I just because I'm gonna have like it. to so dry I, to dry it out to dry it out. Oh, ask I don't Kiki. Really, I, ask Kiki I, I, and them. Kiki, Kiki and them will help me. Kiki in the yeah. front, the Conrad Hotel. Kiki. All right, uh, guys. This this is enough pleasantries. Normally we give you more pleasantries, but we gotta we gotta get to the podcast, okay? Because we gotta we gotta talk about some stuff that's going on. Um, on the podcast today we have an incredibly special guest, Jamel Hill, okay? Um, and we want to talk to her a little bit about the discourse around Malika Andrews and how Twitter is going in. It's no quarter from Malika Andrews on Twitter, and like, what is at the root of this? Is it misogyny? Do people feel like she's anti-black? What's the true discussion that needs to be had? And why has the reaction to the Ime Udoka situation become so polarized? We'll talk to Jamil about that in a second. Okay, guys, uh, we told you that we discussed a little bit about of the conversation surrounding Malika Andrews, Stephen A. Smith, Ime Udoka, and the response to the entire, I don't know, it's a Twitter bullshit and the way it's ran its head on social media, we want to bring in somebody who understands that world, who understands navigating it, and who has conquered it. That's why I brought in my <laughs> sister, my sister, 
Of course, you guys know her, Jamel Hill. She is one of the brightest minds in sports. She hosts the Jamel Hill is Unbothered podcast here on the Spotify network. She hosted Way Down in the Hole, the definitive podcast on the wire um, <laughs> with myself here uh, on, on the Ringer Network. And of course, you might know her formerly her time at ESPN, so she understands some of the media spin that can that can arise from working there. Jamel, how are you doing today? Hey, it's a pleasure to be here with you both, both who have been guests on Jamel Hill is Unbothered. So it's Absolutely. just a lot of full circle-ness happening right now. Yes. I, w- I want to get into this with you because obviously I'm, you're up on the story. Ime Udoka's having issues uh, big time. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, it's been suspended for a year and there's been all kinds of talk around if he should have been suspended what's going on there is it fair are people taking it out on him because he's black this and this and that um, and it's led to some discussion at ESPN you know n- notably between Stephen A. Smith Malika Andrews and then later on in that same day Malika Andrews and Kendrick Perkins and people are coming at Malika Andrews for this saying that uh Yo, she treats black men poorly. She is pushing a pro-feminist agenda at ESPN <laughs> and trying to shut people down. Have you seen this discourse? And can you help us make some sense of it? Oh, yeah, I've definitely seen it. And I caught some strays because of it. And because, uh, you know, the ashies, as I call them, the ashies and the incels decided that they wanted to either try to weaponize me against Malika or bring up the fact that she is just among a long list of black women at ESPN who hate black men. And it was just disappointing, but more than anything, uh, Van and Rachel, I mean, to be a hundred percent honest, it's hurtful. It's really, really hurtful. It's hurtful because a lot of the people saying that they don't know how hard it is to get to where a Malika Andrews is, where I am. You know, Malika Andrews is not even 30 years old and she has her own daily NBA talk show. She was, I believe, like the youngest sideline reporter ever at the NBA finals. Um, She's just over the last two years been crushing it. The first woman to host the NBA draft, which she did earlier this year. And it's just amazing to see how quickly this has turned from just disagreeing with her opinion of Ime Udoka, which you are allowed to do. And I have no problem if you want to challenge, you know, her uh, assessment of the situation, or even if you want to challenge the fact that the interim coach, she brought in uh, his past criminal record. She brought that uh, into the conversation. That's fine. But where you lose me is when you start saying things like she hates black men, start posting a photo or photos of the person that she is allegedly dating and using that as an indictment to come after her blackness, we look juvenile and silly by doing that. That's a pointless conversation uh, by calling her a sellout, a mammy, a bed wench, all the things that I've been called to. And so that's the part to me that's really, really hurtful. And especially because, and I'm not saying they're the only ones so that people don't misunderstand me, but especially seeing enough of a disturbing amount of it coming from black men. Yeah. So were you, and I don't know if it's, were you shocked by this? Maybe not shocked that this happened, but to the level that it went to in such a quick way. I was very surprised by that, Rachel, to be honest, because, you know, I saw the exchange between her and Stephen A. Smith and the number of men and it was largely men i mean i'm not saying women didn't say anything too applauding stephen a for putting malika in her place was Mm -hmm. like what are we talking about you know it's it's almost like malika used to trend on twitter a lot like during the draft during other nba coverage points because a lot of dudes were looking at malika but like she's fine and she's knowledgeable right then she was trending for all the right reasons in their mind but the moment that she voiced a stronger opinion, particularly this kind of issue. Then all of a sudden she is a biscuit eater and a bed witch. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to follow what the train of thought was. Um, the, no, the biscuit eater is y'all the one that kills the, Y'all can't do the, I've been man, telling the do you know, man, do y'all you know how many times Every time y'all do the biscuit thing, a biscuit eater. Biscuit. I don't even know what that means. I was like, Wait a minute, I, what does it mean? I was like, I like biscuits. Is that wrong? Wait a minute. 
when did, when did I get, when did I get that, biscuit shamed? I don't even understand this. That is the funniest <laughs> diss on the internet because I, I'll tell you why. All of my friends have been subject to this, and it's one thing that just like it's just something visceral about calling somebody <laughs> saying that they want masses butter biscuits. It's hilarious, <laughs> but it's fucked up. Anyway, I'm not I mean no, but man, I've been, I've been struggling to understand this insult for years. I'm like, okay, mammy, I get. <laughs> And Jemima, I get bed winch, I get I get all of those, but the biscuits. I was like, what did biscuits ever do to anybody except for to be fluffy and delicious? Like I don't understand why this attack on biscuits. But no, to answer your question, I was really surprised at the ferocity of the attack. And this is what I also want people to understand is that like. These debate shows, as you see, they're all over television, in the sports sphere, in the political sphere. People go at it on TV every day. I see dudes right. calling each other stupid and all these kind of things. Like, they go at each other every day on these shows. Some take it personal, some don't. You know, a lot of times when you're in this debate format, as I know all too well, having been on every debate show practically at ESPN, you might have a heated, passionate discussion, commercial hit, you joking about something else, right? Mm -hmm. So the people at home are often taking it way more seriously than you are. Because at home, mm -hmm. they're keeping score like, oh, he sunned her, or oh, she did this. Like, we're not thinking about it this way. This is what we do for a living. So when I saw the exchange, and yes, it was testy. That's what I would, I would, I think that's a fair. Did you have uh, any issue with the exchange between Stephen A. Smith so, and Monica Andrews? You know, I can see both sides of it from this standpoint is that, yeah, she was she was certainly strong in her opinion. And I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything wrong with that. He was strong in his opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. To me, the part that gave me a little pause is him feeling the need to remind her that it's his show. And, I, you know, I get it. I, I, I get it, but don't get it. It's one of those things where I just think even in, a, in the course of a passionate, respectful discussion, even one that gets a little bit heated, it's got to be a certain level of a boundary that is created mm -hmm. there. Like yeah. when you try not to embarrass the other person across from you, even if you don't necessarily uh, uh, agree, you know, I remember uh, when Mike and I were doing his and the, her, uh, his and hers and he would get sports center. Mike used to talk about one of his pet peeves was when, you know, you're in a back and forth and it really is just a back and forth because there's gotta be a little bit of volley going on if you want the debate to be good. And it was one person in particular that was an ESPN personality who whenever somebody would just try to volley back and forth, he'd be like, wait, let me finish and hold up his hand. And see, when you do that, is that it signals something different to the audience. Then it comes off a different way where it's just like, wait, let me do that. Let, let me finish. Oh, oh, OK. So I just think there's certain things just from a TV standpoint that I'm like, eh, whatever. But, I, you know, I, I didn't think it was so overly disrespectful that it warranted the reaction that it got in the social media space where there was just too much of a cheering crowd being happy and excited to see a woman in particular, a black woman, you know, one, a one and one, a being uh, in their mind disrespected on television. Like they were all here for it. And it was just too much cheering. And, you know, I just didn't, I didn't like the reaction at all because I thought it spoke to how even now that, whenever a black woman voices an opinion, it becomes, mm -hmm. it just becomes an invitation for the incels and the ashes to get their rocks off by coming forth with their latest, you know, band of ignorant hotepery on 10. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, did you have a problem with her bringing up um, Joe Mazzula? Joe Mazzula, is it Mazzula? You know, it's I'm Mazzula, bad with yeah. Uh -huh. Joe Mazzula's uh, past arrest. Do you, because because we've, we've I feel like we talked about that on the show before of a journalist reporting something. I think it was around Kobe when we were talking about it. A journalist reporting something and then having to bring up something that they did that doesn't necessarily have to do with the, what the topic is, but they're bringing up something from the past. Do you have a problem with the way that she brought that up when she was discussing him taking over in the head coaching role? Now, Rachel, you're a lawyer by trade, Correct. Correct. Okay, now somebody's past record, if it applies to the case, you usually probably bring it up. I know, I don't know if criminal defense was, or criminality, criminal justice was not your thing, but that's pretty common, right? If it relates to the case. If it's relevant, yes. If it's if relevant. It's relevant. Mm -hmm. So the question I would pose to everybody else, because the majority of America didn't find out about who this interim coach was until he got put 
in the position of being interim coach. That means you don't know anything about his past. You don't know anything about his coaching record, anything. Journalism 101 is to explain to people who this is. Now, the other part of this is that there he's replacing someone who has had some kind of workplace issue related to a woman in the uh, context of some kind of affair that apparently went south in some kind of way that we still don't know. So the treatment of women is on the table because of what the issue that the Celtics are trying to deal with currently is. And I know a lot of people took issue with it, but that's literally journalism 101. Now, let's just say that Emi Adoka had been suspended for a year for, I don't know, kicking a clown. I don't know. They're just thinking of something else that had <laughs> nothing to do, you know, maybe, maybe a bar fight. Maybe that's what it was, right? Or, um, and maybe a bar fight isn't even the best example because I realized that there's a, a element of assault with the current coach, but just say something totally not related to this. And I think then it might be a fair question, but because of the subject matter is about treatment of women, because that's what the coach was just um, suspended a year for, then it is fair game. Look, people don't like it because listen, the same people that are taking issue with Malika bringing this up have no problem. If I go back to Brett Favre cutting somebody off in, in, in 11th grade and bringing that all up into the to the frame now. You know, see, some of us, some of us want it both ways. We only want some people's dirt brought up, but not other people's dirt brought up, right? right. And it's all, you know, like everybody's talking about, you know, how Brett Favre, I mean, he exposed himself to women in his past. You know, it's part right. of the general, when you're talking about somebody's character, okay, this is what he used to do. And it's all relevant. So if it's relevant so, for Brett Favre, why wouldn't it be relevant for somebody else? So th this is what I th this sure. is. So I actually disagree, and let me tell you mm -hmm. why. Um, and I don't disagree in a, I don't disagree in a, like a an aggressive way. But this coach hadn't done anything yet, so we're leading with this now. So like in Brett in Brett Favre's case, I can understand Brett Favre fucking over somebody, and then we go us going back and going look at the times that Brett Favre has, fu has fucked over people in the past. In this situation, it almost seems as if and look, there are certain things that you do in life that you can never escape. Like I tell my I tell my younger brother, uh, uh, Big Sean said it in the, in uh, in in one of his rhymes. It's like my grandmother told me it only takes one time to fuck up your whole Wikipedia. You know, I tell my little brother, I was like just make mistakes but make the right mistakes because understand that there are certain mistakes that you just cannot live down and one of them is always going to be in any way putting your hands on a woman so i'm not i'm not gonna cry in any way because that was brought up you know what i mean i'm not it's something that you do and then you're gonna have to answer it for it by by two decent people for the rest of your life the way that it goes but in this case the first thing like we have we didn't even meet that guy we met that we met that aspect of his life before we met anything else about him. Mm. And, and, and so I don't, well, I don't know if that's, if, the, if that's true, man, because I, I'm going to be honest, like I didn't even know about what you're discussing. I mean, in terms of his past, I, I, that was like, I read about it in a story and it was, it was not even in the first four or five graphs. Like I didn't felt like if you, I don't know if the conversation necessarily, I would disagree that it's leading with, I think it's a, part of the context of yeah like, well, I, I don't know well, if that's the first thing so, that and she so, didn't lead with it when you have to think about how she said it she right. talked about him and then she said just to note and she added it at the end before just she let everybody else uh, talk I, I get that just to note this is how he fucked up in the past like when, when i say this is the first thing we know about him i'm not saying that she said that first what i'm saying is like nobody nobody really knew him and even when i heard that i was like hmm okay Interesting. Now, if you're him somewhere, you might be feeling like, God damn, I just got kicked in my nuts from something. It's like the, the entire thing. I could see people being like, fuck, you know, and but especially <laughs> just to be just to be real with you. And this for me, this is the this could be the toxic part of me. It's just I don't know very many brothers from where I'm from who don't have some sort of past. And I think sometimes what they want particularly from people in the black community is they want second chances. They want opportunities to move forward and prove that they're not the same people they were when they made mistakes in the past. Now, like I said, sometimes you don't always get that, but I think to see 
if that were somebody who was white who did that, everybody would be like, oh, look at the white person bringing up this blah, 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 blah. But to see that it was a black woman, I think that some people were like, fuck, why she did them like that? So let me ask you this. Does it matter to you because of like, if, if oh, it Joseph doesn't matter was, to me. I just can see. No, 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 yeah. no, no. What I'm saying is like, I, I do think it, it, sh- it is worth noting it, because of the situation the Celtics are in. Like if Joe Missoula, if he was, if this wasn't related to um, a violence issue against a woman, like, again, I'll just use the same example. If he got into a bar fight in college, I don't think Malika would have brought that up, to be okay. honest. And I think as a reporter, I probably wouldn't have either. But now he on did, the by table, the way, he had an assault charge. Yeah, he did. I know he did. Yeah, you're, right. you're right. He did. But it was like two. It was uh, it was two yeah. separate incidents. Correct. If I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Yeah. Maybe y'all can correct yes. me. Um, so maybe bar fight. God, that's right. That's a bad example. But mm-hmm. let's just say it was just a bar fight. Right. And that was it. And nothing else was on the table. Um, I think what the I don't know if she would have brought that up because now what's now what's in in public discourse is how do the Celtics treat women at their organization? Because that's what this Emi Adoka situation has created is people mm-hmm. wondering. They're like, OK, so he's having apparently, according to reports, a consensual affair, you know, uh, according to one report, he was making unwanted comments about the woman. There's an investigation that takes place. So now people are wondering, well, well, how are women being treated up in there? And then there was this wider problem of because of the way this news dropped, every woman who works for the Celtics was suddenly put under enormous scrutiny as being, is this the woman who is who has to walk around with the Scarlet X? So treatment of women as a conversation is on the table, which is why I think it was mentioned. If he does something totally different if it's in his past, I don't know that that has that the she same content. Yeah. I don't know that she brings it up. <laughs> now, if I were writing the story, because really, I mean, realize it's different. It's a difference between saying it on TV and in a story to how it registers with people. Because on TV, you're talking about a 15 second, you know, sound clip or 15 second sentence. In print, if you're starting off and you're saying like, hey, Joe Mazzulla, he, uh, you know, he played here, he coached here, he's been in the NBA here, 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 and here. But things haven't always been as smooth. In his past, he was this and this, blah, 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 blah. Maybe you say, okay, well, this is how, you know, since then, there have been no incidents, and this is what other people have to say about this dude. It gives you a little more room to put all of that information together. TV does not allow you the opportunity to do that. I'm not trying to excuse if people think that she was wrong for bringing it in, but just to explain and give sort of a fuller 64,000 foot view of it. Do you think they would have done this with Rachel Nichols? Uh, I do, because as Van said, like I, I think, um, and look, Rachel has caught, when she was in that seat, she caught her share of of, of, of social media flack. I'm sure- They got her the fuck up out of there, yeah. Essentially, like yeah. she caught her, yeah, she caught her share. So I, I think if she, you know, much to Van's point, if she's a white woman who says this about a black coach mm-hmm. with her platform, that's going to raise the same kind of hell. I guess the part in our community that we need to talk openly and honestly about, you know, none of us are going to go through life mistake free. You know, we're all one decision away from, as you said, Van, having our Wikipedia pages read something else. It, totally different. I've certainly made my share of mistakes as well. But as a community, we have to be able to put certain things on the table without everybody being called a sellout or a mammy. Like, we just got to get past that, right? And and, and listen, Mm -hmm. I I fully am making room for the fact there are definitely some people in our community who deserve (laughs) that label. But they deserve that label for a long track record of things. And so suddenly... You know, people trying to say Malika the new stage deal. I'm just like, y'all don't even know her. Like, I know Malika, okay? I know Malika since she was a reporter at uh, the Chicago Tribune. I know Stephen A. Smith. I've known Stephen A. Smith for 20 years. So I can, you know, say both within that dynamic of what looks like contentiousness. I'm sure Stephen A. was not like, let me figure out how to knock this woman down a peg or two. But the fact that so many people are reveling in that, and that uh, dynamic is just, is really, it's just weird behavior. And unfortunately it just shows kind of the price you pay if you are a black woman in that position and Lord forbid you have a critical word for a black man. Because I I went through this whole thing with, with Floyd Mayweather bringing up his domestic violence stuff. Oh my God. That's why I was like, yeah, this is, a, 
this is like watch Fritz repeat all all over again, <laughs> mm-hmm. all yeah. over again. And the level of the the Floyd stands, they up there in terms of top five worst up there. Do you, do you know what the interesting thing about Stephen A. Smith though is that he does have a track record of being less than uh, cordial or appropriate when discussing women on first take. He yeah. like he does. <laughs> like remember, like he they they suspended him back in the day because he uh, they, they, they did, they did. When it happened. When, like they suspended him back in the day when he intimated that maybe you shouldn't provoke an athlete into hitting you this was based after the Ray Rice situation and they and he he got in trouble so I, it's just interesting that like that that wasn't brought into this debate. I'm not saying that Stephen A. Smith has a problem with relating to women. I'm saying that I could easily connect those two things and say, hey, this is the same guy who said, I also tell my sister, don't provoke a man into abusing you, which is a fucking nuts <laughs> thing to say on television. I'm sorry. I know that's your guy. It's like, like it, no, it, it, I mean, it, it, I was <laughs> disappointed that he said that as well. So like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to at all absolve him from that comment. That was that was a bad moment for him, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it's just this is why sports is such a um, it can be a very unwelcome space, you know, for women, because, you know, I was just going through some of the comments and it was just interesting how not only was there cheering in terms of knocking Malika down a peg or two, but it was a whole lot of this is why women don't belong in sports. And who is she to, even with Kendrick Perkins, who is she to challenge Kendrick Perkins and Richard Jefferson? And she's never played and all this kind of stuff and all that noise that most of us who are in the game have heard that our entire fucking careers. Like, mm. you're, that's not a new insult, my man. It's not new. I've heard that <laughs> shit my whole fucking career. I know I didn't play. I got it. Okay, I, I I didn't black out at that time. I was in the NFL and fucking missed it. I already know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, yo, but uh, you know, as I often said to them, your ass didn't play either. You feel bad exactly. comfortable telling me how to, to do my job, and you yeah. yelling at your TV, acting like you know more than Patrick Mahomes too. So I guess right. we both in the same boat. But the difference mm-hmm. is, I'm actually getting paid to give my opinion, and your ass ain't. So <laughs> it's what it is. Don't get me started. <laughs> I, no, no, I, I love it. Um, by the way, we are going to. I, I want to. Jamel has an amazing book coming out later on. We haven't got a chance to read it yet because it's it doesn't come out for a little while. We're gonna have her back on the show to talk about the book, but we wanted to just real quick plug the book. Just get as, you got to get as yes. much out there as you can. I, I, oh, you you see, you know my you know. my fellow memoir yeah. buddy in the struggle. Like you got to plug mm-hmm. the book as much as possible. It's called Appeal. Uh, if they show video of this, you can see it right behind me. Got the mm-hmm. copy strategically placed, uh, and it's out October twenty fifth. Available for pre order now wherever books are sold. And I won't even hold y'all up. And I'm sure, Van, you had the same idea as well. It's like, I'm trying to make the New York Times bestseller list. So I yeah. need y'all to buy the fucking book. <laughs> buy the book. Y'all always talk about how down y'all are for the cause. And then y'all be picked. Go buy the book. That's it. Go buy the book. Buy the, book. <laughs> buy the fucking book. All right. Now, look. Um, we got to let you go. Thank you for the insight. Thank yeah, you. thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Uh, if you had advice for Malika Andrews that you could give her right now, last question I'll ask you, what would be your advice? Because I'm sure it must not be easy seeing your name trending, seeing people bring up your personal life, seeing people call you a bed wench, butter biscuits, the whole nine. <laughs> biscuit eater. <laughs> <laughs> biscuit eater, the whole nine. What would, you be, what would your advice to Malika Andrews be? Well, my advice would be uh, for her is, is just to do what she can to protect her peace. You sort of have to wall yourself off from it and have even more faith and confidence that you're doing the job that you were supposed to do. Uh, And I would also tell her that this is the ebbs and flows that you go through. Those same people who are blowing up her mentions now, calling her all those names and criticizing her, um, you know, pushing their own anti-black agenda, since everybody got an agenda, pushing that on her, that all those people in three months will either have forgotten her, forgotten about it, or be like, oh, Malika's great. You know, it just, this is part of the territory that people love you one minute and they hate you the mm-hmm. next. So you can't get emotionally invested in either side of it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, cause you have to know that one day it'll disappear and people will find something else to fuck with you about. 
And you just have to uh, have this really unshakable confidence that you are doing what you're supposed to do. Because all the people talking shit about you cannot do what you do. Yeah, word up. Sure that's, yeah. that's Jamel Hill. Jamel Hill is unbothered, is on um, is on Spotify. You guys, we got to get Jamel some Brussels sprouts. Oh, hell no. Nah. Um, yeah, hell. yeah. We got to get Jamel, we gotta get Jamel some Brussels sprouts. When I come back, when, when I, I, she, come, back, when yeah. I come back, because maybe we could, because I think we might be doing that in person. We might be. We just, uh, that's going to be in person. Brussels okay. sprouts taste test. Have some, Brussels, have some Brussels sprouts for me. We're going to do it. Oh. Oh, because Brussels sprouts are the devil's food. That's why. No, like, only communists go. like Brussels no. sprouts. I'll make it's some. Terrible. I'll make gotta you go. some. Nah, that's not what we're going to do. That's not what we're going to do. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm not, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with the sure thing. All right, Jamel, thank you, for, right, thank you for joining thank us. Bye bye. Okay, uh, Rachel, Hurricane Ian is uh, really battering Florida. So triggering for me. Have you seen any of the footage coming out from from from? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean it's it's almost unreal, right? Like you're, you, you see it and you're like, is this actually happening? And to hear the yeah. stories of, you know, like I watch the coverage, but I try not to watch too much of the coverage because it just becomes, it's so sad to see people's homes underwater, their cars, all their belongings. I mean, people on top of roofs, people trying to save animals. It's just, and I was listening to, I was listening to the mayor of St. Petersburg talk today, and he was really giving a warning about, well, first he was saying how, you know, it's been nice to see that, you know, the way that politicians in Florida have been approaching this or people, you know, who have the power to do things are, are being very bipartisan with this because they're realizing so many people are suffering. So many people are going to be displaced. And, and, you know, of course, they're also talking about how it's after the storm passes through that it's really dangerous because yeah. people don't have power. Power lines are down, you know, water's everywhere. You don't really, can't really assess the damage and see everything. And there's just so much danger lurking in the waters. Um, but he also talks about climate change and kind of a wake up call if people really need to pay attention because what's happening is so devastating, but it's not just a one-off. And if we don't, if each person doesn't do their individual part to take care of what's you know, what they can do for the climate to try to stop these things from happening or be a better person when it comes to taking care of, you know, the environment. We're good. This is just the beginning of it is what he was saying, which I thought was interesting. I mean, he was on Morning Joe, so it made sense to I guess, have that conversation. Well, I don't think it's actually the beginning. I think we're we're past the beginning. These storms are getting more aggressive. Uh, I guess what you mean. I guess I can understand at the beginning yeah. of the the entire shift is what is is, sure. is what they're saying. Um, and I remember even when Katrina came through Florida, when Katrina came through Florida, it was uh, it weakened. And then it hit the Gulf, and it was just like just on steroids. The water was so warm in the Gulf always that a, a storm really really gathers a lot of steam. And you know, as we see these waters rise, um, or in temperature, we're gonna see more storms that are incredibly intense and that once every three to four year storm is going to become a once every year storm and yeah. then that once every three to four year storm is going to become even more of a mammoth uh and a behemoth than it already is um you know it's so exhausting sometimes litigating the merits of climate change it it, yeah. it seems like something you shouldn't have to do and it's right. just like this sinking feeling when you look at everybody down there. Uh, when you think about people dying of politics, you know, and if you do any history, you know that politics is probably the leading, the leading cause of death in human history, you know, um, mm -hmm. at least civilized human history. So, uh, you know, and I don't want to bleed too much over in, into that, but I, I do want to to let people know that on our social media, we're going to have up resources where you can help out because the people that this truly affects are, I saw this one video <clears throat> with a guy and his McLaren was floating in the water. Oh, Did you yeah, see that? I saw that. Okay. All, res all due respect to McLaren float dude. I bet he's going to be okay. That sucks that your McLaren is floating in the water, but McLaren float guy is going to be just, a, just, just fine. Unless... 
He won the lottery and then went out and bought, put all of his money into McLaren. He doesn't have any insurance, then he's fucked. But like McLaren float guy is going to be okay. Well, but oh, I, and this is what I mean to say by that. What I mean to say is, as much as that sucks, there are people that aren't going to be able to replace cars that aren't McLarens. We're talking about cars that they're not stunting in, cars that they need to get from point A to point B, and those are the people who are going to need a lot of help in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. I'm not minimizing what McLaren guy is going through. I'm not. I'm just saying we have to keep our minds on the fact that when some sometimes people lose everything and they can't replace it. Yeah, I mean, I... It's- that video of him posting or wherever it got, I saw it on somebody else's site posting that doesn't, we have no idea what the backstory is. We have no idea what else they lost. We have no idea how else this has affected him. So I'm like cautious in saying like, okay, that guy's going to be okay because we don't know what the rest of the story is behind that. I'm betting that if he has a McLaren, he's going to be okay from the McLaren. Anybody that is, has been affected by this, whether they're driving a McLaren or something a lot less than it's just, it's just, it's it's devastating. It really Look is. at Rachel sticking up for the rich. I, I really thought you were Miss Revolution. I really thought, like, look at- Oh, you're, look at, you're enjoying this so much. Look at I am Rachel, not. let them eat cake, Lindsay over here. <laughs> No, I just, yeah, you just have no idea what people lost. And it's, it's You're always, it's right. always weird to me to be here. We are, you know, in California, it's a beautiful day. The weather's nice. We're sitting here podcasting. And then like literally on the other side of the country, people have lost everything. It's just such a weird feeling. So it's weird to talk about. It's, it's it's hard to even comprehend. This is happening in your very own country. Uh, for those people who did ask me, family in Florida is safe. Thank you for asking that. And okay. Ah, uh, Van, I was sitting down last night. Really excited because a new season of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City was starting. There's a lot. You don't watch. You don't. You know, I got to. Before I just go into the topic, I got to get you to sit down and watch just one franchise. It's got to be Potomac or Atlanta because that's where we we yeah. we live. Yeah. But I got to get you into one of them. I actually think you would really enjoy it and be entertained by all the mess. But Salt Lake City's coming back and there's a lot of drama surrounding it, a lot of rumors that have been circulating. So I was very eager that the premiere was finally here. And then as I'm sitting watching and I get an alert on my phone that we lost Coolio. Coolio passed away. It was a sudden and shocking death. He had just performed last week in Texas on stage doing his thing. Um, The statement came from his talent manager, Sheila Finnegan, who said, quote, we are saddened by the loss of our dear friend and client, Coolio, who passed away this afternoon. She further went on to say he touched the world with the gift of his talent and will be missed profoundly. Thank you to everyone worldwide who has listened to the music and to everyone who has been reaching out regarding his passing. Please have Coolio's loved ones in your thoughts and prayers. Um, man, life will thoughts. live. Life will live. Gone too soon. Rachel, I'm going to give you the opportunity. 58. 50, like 59 years old. It says here. 59. 58, 50, yeah, 59. 59. Uh, had some amazing I'm gonna give you the opportunity to walk back the notion that Coolio's death interrupted <laughs> the beginning no of, I didn't say no uh, you, mis- uh, oh, you misinterpreted that whole thing Donnie jump in didn't it sound a little bit like but Donnie see okay, he's laughing the, didn't, the didn't, point? Didn't, Donnie didn't it sound just just Did I know I that's not what you meant did I use the word interrupted I, 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 I know that's not, I know that's not what you meant but why is Donnie laughing didn't it sound it a little bit like Donnie go ahead and tell the, her the yeah. point yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead how, and tell her. How, you go, I'm gonna go have ahead. to go back and listen to this. First of all, did yeah. the lights go out? The of your lights room? just What's went happening? out. I, yeah, that was cool. Oh, the Conrad. Oh. The Conrad. <laughs> that was Coolio. No, it felt like uh, it didn't feel like it in the moment, but retroactively looking back no, on it, it felt made like you do that. <laughs> no. no, the point was I was so I was looking forward to this the whole night, and then. 
I was like, had such joy sitting out and watching it. And then I was sad when I saw the, got the alert that Coolio passed away. That's the point of the whole conversation. Like mm. I have, was in one mood and then that changed my mood. I was really sad to see that he passed okay. at such a young age. That was the point. Put a poll out there. No, Thought Warriors, no, 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 Polish no. Jackals. Did you really think I was saying that no. Coolio's death interrupted? I don't think. I don't think we need a poll. I just. I want to make sure that we that we're clear. Oh my yeah. 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 So yeah. So that's sorry. the thing. Ben just gave I, you the opportunity to clean it up, to clear, to clear, clear it, it up, up, so that there's like no confusion. So there's no way that anybody could think. You know what I mean? Because we we're talking about Cool Hill and you started off with the Real Housewives, which, by the way, it's not the only time you did that because we talked about the Real Housewives before. So it's not, yes, it's, 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 saying, it's, it's top of mind. Yeah. It changed my mood. I was affected by seeing that he passed away. So suddenly yeah. I was like, whoa, Coolio? And Donnie, you got in his head, which you're probably going to get in everybody else's head listening to this because Donnie said he was fine. And then you brought that up and he was like, oh, well, <laughs> maybe it does sound like that. <laughs> Here's the deal. I, this is what I'll say, and I'll and and this is we. It's hard to describe for people who don't really know just how big Coolio was in the mid '90s. Like Coolio was the man. I don't think so because I think we're looking at Gangsta's Paradise, uh, Gangsta's Paradise, right? But I'm talking about Fantastic Voyage. Come on, y'all, let's take a ride. Don't you say a world just get inside. We about to take a one on another kind of kid because you can't have the hop if you don't have the hit. Grab your gat with the extra <laughs> clip and like I used that was my shit. Kick it, kick it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Ain't no bloods, ain't no cripping, ain't no fools in the party set tripping. Everybody got a stack and it ain't no crack. And it really doesn't matter if you're white or black. Like I, like I loved Coolio. It was upbeat, life affirming rap, but not always. He had a song called "Too Hot," where he remade. I think it was a, uh, was a, was it a Cool in the Gang song? What's the Too Hot? Who, who made the original "Too Hot"? Um, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, a Cool in the Gang song. What the song was actually about, like sexually transmitted diseases. You know what I mean? Oh. And then, of course, he hits big with one of the biggest records in the history of hip hop. Coolio gives us Gangster's Paradise from the goddamn Dangerous Mind soundtrack, which, by the way, the song Gangster's Paradise is a character in Dangerous Minds. They Neil dropped the song so many times. We did a rewatchables, Dangerous Minds, Shea Serrano, Bill Simmons, and myself. And the song plays so much. It is, it's a character in there. Huge record. Won a Grammy yes. for the record. Gigantic record. Should have won Best Original Song at the Academy Awards, if you're asking me. Okay? Coolio, just a fun, incredible talent. Grew up in the streets of Los Angeles. Took all of that, parlayed it into an amazing rap career gone at 59 we're losing our legends too early mm -hmm. I, I'm I, I see people like bit boy playing with a, a goddamn owl I see red man skydiving I see the rest of these brothers I see Andre 3000 playing the flute I want the soft life for our brothers in hip-hop brothers and sisters in hip-hop I want the soft life after they've put the mic down. I want to see them mm -hmm. live long, long, fruitful lives because we've lost yeah. a lot of them. We lost Biz. We lost Doom. You know what I'm saying? We lost Coolio. We lost X. You know, we like, I want to see these brothers take care of themselves. And that, yeah, it was sad when I saw when I when I saw that Coolio had passed away, man. Rest in peace to Coolio. Really made his mark, man. Really made a billion Views on YouTube, Gangsta's Paradise, a song that came out in goddamn, was it 96? 1996. Still get a billion views. Still did a billion views, man. Come on, man. It's Coolio. such a crossover song, too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. give me, give me, give me as much Gangsta's Paradise as you could, as you could, as you can give me right now, Rachel. Give me as much as you can give me. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Come on, Rach. Dun, 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 I'm dun, ready. Dun, dun, dun. Go. As I walk, As I through, walk the, through the valley of the shadow of death, I take I'll a take look, a look, look at my, my life. life. 
Realize there's nothing like there's nothing left. Cause I've been, been laughing and blasting, blasting, blasting so long that, that even my even mama thinks I'm a thing. But I ain't back. never killed never a man that didn't deserve it. Me be treated like a punk. You know that's unheard of. You better watch how you're talking and where you're walking. Or you and your homies will be lined in chalk. I really hate the trips, but I got a low. <laughs> a legend, man. A legend. Um, like we got, we have to. What we have to do, we have to, because I'm getting so much joy from Coolio, but he's not here. We have to start doing something where we just pick a legend and celebrate them, so they could see it and feel it and get these hugs, man, and get yeah. these flowers. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and people oh, like your your homeboy ain't calling him Dusty. All right now. All right now. Can, can, I, can I talk about that, though, for a second? Can sure. I talk about that? Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. So, uh-huh. obviously, Academic said that the hip-hop, some of the guy, the hip-hop founders are dusty. Okay? Let's talk about this for a second. And I really mean something here when I say this. Obviously, we would want younger brothers in hip-hop to speak better when they're talking about their elders and people who have paved the way. Because that's just basic respect. See, there's two, there's two different, and this, this kind of relates to the Coolio thing. There's basic respect that we want to have for people who've paved the way in anything that we're doing, right? There's basic respect for our elders, okay? There's basic respect for people who have who have sacrificed and paved the way. And then there's like cultural respect and all of that stuff. All right. There's something else there though. I don't really thought about what Axe said. Okay? What I thought about was the fact that Ack represents something there. He, re- he represents a very specific programming that comes from mainstream hip hop. And the programming is, and I don't mean that, I'm not, I'm not about to be a guy that's blame hip hop for this, but the programming is very specific. It's like there are very specific markers to being a successful hip hop mainstream character. One of them is money, the other one is influence. Then you got women. Um, uh, then you got, so I would say money, women, power. And I mean, now the, even the quality of music kind of is not even as big a deal as it used to be, right? For sure. And the image. The image, right? And the kids think that everybody that's trying to get clout and everybody that's trying to be lit and everybody that'll do whatever they have to do to make a buck. And everybody will do whatever they have to do to uh, to get noticed. They think that because that's what we told them. So we told them, and when I say we, I mean, I grew up listening to rap music that said, if you ain't got the change, you ain't shit. If you broke, you ain't shit. Like, like bro boys don't deserve no pussy. I know that's right. Like all, Like, all of that stuff, like that's, I mean, that's on both sides of it, right? Like we... Have put, so when he sees them and he sees somebody that literally sat in their in their basement digging through records and creating an art form, the art form, whether or not you could rap or whether or not you could do all of that stuff, that don't matter to that don't matter to some of these kids. Like what matters to them is what do you have to show for it? And I think that attitude culturally is rat poison. And that needs to be litigated or and discussed way past what Axe said, how, how, how we view and value people, you know what I mean? How we view and value people and how our culture takes care of its elders. Obviously, Charlemagne said some of this, but I'll tell you something like that. I'll tell you, like, the Rolling Stones are etched in youth. Like, they're 70 some years old, but they're really not. They're, Mick mm-hmm, Jagger right mm-hmm. now is the same age he was in 1967. Sure. And that's because the music and the songs are timeless. Hip hop is so, it, it's so stuck in like, it's like right now, the, the could the, could the, 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 the could Jay-Z have a, ha, have a tour as big as the Rolling Stones performing records from 2000, 2001, 2002? Probably not. Because we look at aging in, in in this a little bit different, so we have to take we have to look at the longevity of this culture and the longevity of these guys like Coolio and like X, so they don't burn out. And I'm not just talking about burning out in terms of passing away. I'm talking about 
how how do we take care of them? And everybody's been talking about how do we take care of them and how do we honor them? Because mm-hmm. all too often we forget about them. And sure. a, a lot of the guy hip hop guys in, in their 40s that you see carrying on on Instagram right now, a lot of the ones you see getting involved in every single different cause, going going viral for doing stupid shit. A lot of them that's trying all of these wacky ass new careers, that's doing all of this stuff, they're afraid you guys are going to forget about them. That's what they're afraid of. Like they're scared that one day they're going to be looked at as the old dusty guy because they spent a career telling you that the old dusty guy sucked. Pac said it, nigga looking like Larry Holmes, flabby and sick. What was Larry Holmes? A old champion past his prime. There's no greater sin in hip hop than being past your prime. And I'm and I was actually shocked that so many people were surprised that he had that outlook. Of course they feel like that. Of course, like we told them, like like we told them, the OGs in hip hop told them that in order to be the man, to be a man, the dude, that nigga, there were certain things you had to have. And if you look at somebody, like, I don't give a fuck that you were spinning records in the park, 1977, and you gave, I don't give a fuck about that. You ain't got no chain. You don't have no uh, no IG model. You ain't got no cool car. Boom, you out. And like. I feel like I, that's not what academics was saying. I feel like I missed all of that. Well, no, I mean, he wouldn't say it that way. I would, but so. Okay, like, I was so like. What, what, no, that, what he. I get everything you're saying. I'm like, but. He was more so talking about, from what I gather, that he was talking about, like, you're not reaching out down and helping you keeping all this wealth and knowledge to, or not even wealth, but just this knowledge to yourself about how to navigate this. And you're not passing it down to these young folks. They're making the same mistakes that you guys did back in the day, or maybe they didn't, but they're making these mistakes now and you're not passing down the knowledge. Like, well, that's... I- that's what he said after the first thing that he said is every time I see one of these hip hop legends and pioneers, they look old and dusty to me. And that part of it is the part that a lot of people clip. Now, the reasons why they're old and dusty is he's saying that there's a cycle of usury that exists in our culture that we ha- are having trouble breaking away from. That's obviously true. But the reality is we've criminalized being broke. We talked about this when we talked about sure. the PNB rock situation. We've criminalized being broke or in some way not having, not being able to wear all your wealth on your chest in certain pockets of the culture. Obviously, it's not all like this, but in certain pockets of the culture, we've criminalized that, right? Mm-hmm. Like we watching videos, people in the club, like fucking streamers or whatever the fuck, the sparklers coming through. You got to be that or you ain't shit. Right, so obviously, right. they, obviously he's going to feel that way. And so if you care about what he said, man... If you care about what he said, go somewhere right now and tell Cool Herc how much he mean to you. Like, like if you if you care about what he said, you know, go somewhere right now, you know, and 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 dig up one of the guys from the old school, like Kumo D or uh, Big Daddy Kane, you know, DMC and Rev Run are still here. Like, tell those guys how much they mean to you, or better yet, buy a ticket, go out and support them because they still trying to get money off their music right now. So we can take care of these people, but it's not going to be with bad feelings and fuck people who say shit like that. Now, he was wrong to say it, and he said it in a very disrespectful way. You got to disrespect. But the point remains, man. Speaking of PNB Rock, this looks like this could be a fucking family hit. This is wild. A 17 year old has been arrested as the su- as the shooter, and the second suspect has been identified as the guy's fucking dad. The 17-year-old was the shooter. The dad was driving the getaway car. Speaking of teaching the youth the wrong fucking thing, this is what I'm talking about. He's suspected of being the shooter and both the father and the son were in the parking lot of Roscoe's. Apparently, they saw PNB Rock come in. Um, uh, the getaway car was driven by the older guy um the the gentleman's name is freddie lee trone uh and a 30 year old woman named chantelle trone was arrested in book as an accessory to murder in connection with pnb rocks pnb rocks death 
I don't know what to say. This is one of the saddest, most fucked up commentaries on some of the ill parts of what it is that we're talking about. One of the worst things I've seen in a long time, man. Well, and the woman whose name is uh, Accessory, she shares her same last name. I don't know how she fits all into this, but she seems like she's a relative as well. Yeah. It's, yeah. I I was shocked when I saw this because what I saw when I saw this rolled out, I just saw the picture of the old man. I had no idea his son was the shooter. I had no idea he had a son that was involved. And now we see that this woman who's clearly related to them as well was involved too. Yeah, this is... Um, the more, I'm sure in the more and the more that time goes on and we find out more details, it's just going to be sadder and sadder. Yeah. Obviously, this should have never yeah. happened. But, never we, happened. We, you know, the challenge to a lot of brothers and the OGs in the game and I'm not I'm not waving. I'm not uh, painting everybody with the same brush. You know, the responsibility that we have and this is a father failing his son. This is a father failing his son. If this is true. Allegedly, this is a father failing his son. For what? For the for the for the chain on the neck of another brother. God do better, man. God do better. We have to talk about this stuff more as well. Um, mm-hmm. did you watch the Dahmer show? I can't get into it. I I started it. I started it. You know, I hear people like you talk about it, talk about it was so good. So I was like, let me sit down, let me watch this. It's a tough watch for me, but I also just don't like it. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's very difficult to watch. I'm not going to lie. It made me very angry. So I haven't finished it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Made me very angry. You finished I finished it? it. I finished it, yeah. It made me very, very angry. Very angry. The Dahmer show is in a, in a lot of ways sensationalist, but in a lot of ways it is a, a scathing indictment of a failure of systems and the minimization of black people and their fears in America. Uh and uh, this was my era like when it was 92 when all of this stuff was going down and so it was the biggest thing on television it's all over Geraldo all over you know all of that stuff but it's so much deeper than even I remember as as a kid you know sure of course yeah um I oh wait were you gonna say something no 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 I'm listening well I do find it interesting the discourse around it all because you know even I I lived in Milwaukee for three years people still talk about it but I have not seen something, and there's been a lot on Jeffrey Dahmer, but I had not seen it told from this angle, at least to my knowledge. Like it is, I'm sure it's out there in some form, but I had not seen it told from, I guess, seeing how these systems had failed, seeing Niecy Nash play the neighbor, seeing how there were multiple complaints, seeing how there were missing pictures um, up of of young black men, seeing that he was terrorizing this neighborhood, living amongst them, I hadn't really seen it from that. And so, because when I see when I when I saw that this was coming out, it's like, why do we need another one of these? That really was my thought. Why do we need to see this again? I understand true crime. I like to watch true crime as well. I'm not in it like that where I'm listening to podcasts and reading books and stuff. But I understand the fascination with it. But we see. Th- Dahmer's been told so many times, Ted Bundy's been told so many times, we see, we almost seem to sensationalize these serial killers in such a way where they're celebrities, even after they've died, they've passed away. So I, but I did find it interesting from up to the part that I watched that this told it from a side I had not seen before and almost as if it was to shame the police system to shame the way that they treated the black people in that community and the way they handled this case. They fumbled the case. Jeffrey Dahmer should have been caught so many times. It's like, Once the, a, Je- oh, Jeff- sorry. oh, what are you going to say? It's like, what? The, the, what we talked about with the young woman where they didn't believe her story. And then somebody ended up uh, dying. She was sexually assaulted. And then somebody ended up, uh, he ended up murdering the a next person. Black woman. And it's still it's happening. A black woman. Yeah. You know, you have a black lady next living next door to him is that that the police in the thing. A young man escaped, 14 year old man escaped Jeffrey Dahmer, who's drugged and incoherent. His next door neighbor and her niece and daughter tell the police, hey, don't you need to take this boy? Dahmer comes to the police. This is a true thing. It says, hey, this guy's my boyfriend. They let him take the kid back upstairs. He's 14 years old. And then he kills him. Those cops 
which I wouldn't research this. Those cops were put on administrative administrative leave and got their jobs back after they show mm. that in the they show that in um Negan. in the show. One of the guys later on became the president of the police union. No. One of those two officers in the Dahmer situation became the president of the police union. Not only did he not use his job, he fed a 14-year-old kid to a fucking serial killer and he still failed up you gotta fucking be kidding me about this shit he still failed up hmm. Boosie says we shouldn't watch it play the audio Donnie us as blacks we need to ban this Jeffrey Dahmer movie this is some sick shit what he did to our race this is some sick shit we need to boycott this damn movie off Netflix. This is sick. This is sick. That the victim that- family should be getting paid off every dollar <laughs> Netflix made. Okay. This is fucking sick. Okay. Uh, so that cop's by the, by the name, if you want to look that up, that cop's name is John Balserzak. John Balserzak is one of the two cops. He ended up becoming um, the, the president of the police union down there. Uh, Boosie's probably mad because of the gay stuff, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boosie's, Boosie's which I'm probably. actually shocked he did say. I was shocked he said it, and then I was like, let me just think about this for a second. Boosie being on the right side of things, mm, I don't he's that. not. He, he he's. I, I'll be honest with you. He's not. He's not wrong here in terms of. I wonder what making because when I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of Jeffrey Dahmer shit that's inappropriate. I'm seeing people. I, uh, Rick Ross said he wants a pair of Jeffrey uh-huh. Dahmer glasses. I saw somebody else uh, from a different podcast use a poster of one of the podcast hosts as Jeffrey Dahmer for a joke. You know, this guy killed 17 people. And I think when you bring somebody into the cultural lexicon like this, it gets put in the bucket of all being entertainment. So there is a certain, it does in a way, Make this less serious in a way when we start to be entertained by it. Myself they do included. That? Yeah, for, for sure. And so I would say that yes, for once he's halfway on the right side of it. But I think that the message needs to be redirected. It's not about boycotting it. It's about focusing on these people who actually were real victims and affected by it. And every single time you sensationalize or if, or put something out in in the form of media for entertainment value you don't realize the impact that you're having on these victims who are still alive, who have to relive this situation. Nothing's done for them. They aren't warned when it comes out. There's a really interesting LA Times article about it. The families have no idea that this is coming out for pure entertainment until the rest of us find out, until they watch a trailer. They're not notified. They're not questioned. They're not compensated. Nothing. Especially, you know, the viral clip of the young Black woman who like totally has a breakdown in the, which I never knew about has a breakdown that is burned burned into my memory as a kid. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I I hate you, Jeffrey. Don't fuck with me. Burned into my memory as a kid. I remember seeing that. And wearing the shirt like that, that kind of stuff. And it, you know, people it's going viral and they're watching it for again, entertainment, but how hard is it for that 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 woman and her family to relive that over and over again? Like they, they finally feel like, okay, I can move on. And this is what the article talks about. And then another thing comes out, and their phone is ringing. People, you know what I mean? It's it's like they have to relive it all over again. So I would say that Boosie's message, yes, is clear, or is is right to a point. But we need to refocus on the people who actually are suffering and not entertain. When this stuff kind of stuff comes out, Donnie, uh, it's time. I've heard you guys. I've heard you. I've heard your call. The call of the wild. Okay. <laughs> I've heard your call. You guys want to know what I think about Sneaky Mountain Lion. 
Okay. Rachel, did you see the video? I did. Security camera video from September 2021 in Ojai, California, an amazing little spa town up near Santa Barbara. A man jogs past full-grown mountain lion, doesn't even see mountain lion. Mountain lion is hiding behind a bush, just looks at the guy jog, and the guy runs right past him. When we first started this podcast, I told you that you never knew because the sneaky, wily, beautiful, amazing, majestic mountain lion is out there. Is this not, one question for you, a perfect example of what I was talking about when I'm talking about mountain lion? Man, it's terrifying. You realize (laughs) that I don't hide. (laughs) <laughs> because of you there isn't a bush mm. a hill that i don't really look at and when, when i ever since we started this conversation about mountain lion where i'm like there could be one i don't have a stick i'm always <laughs> thinking of what would i yeah. do if something happens yeah. to me you have yes van you have succeeded in ruining something that people in la love to do you have ruined this for me as a newcomer to los angeles and seeing a video like this i mean that guy has no idea. No clue. And still might not. He doesn't. He, 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 that dude doesn't know. Now, that dude has no is idea. this an ignorance is bliss situation? Would you want to be this guy who continues to enjoy their, their morning runs and unbeknownst to them, I Matt never Lyon is watching. I never, never want to know. know. I never want to know. As long as it never touches you, you never want to know. I don't want to know. I agree. I'm, I, I never want to know. If I'm that guy, I never want to know. Which is why it is so infuriating that you have ruined the experience for me. I'm trying to help See you. See what I'm saying? You never want to know. No, no, no. I didn't need your help. I never want to know. But you know what? We have to remember, though. We have to remember that my line is not the enemy. Look. Look at this beautiful. I love him. <laughs> look at this oh, beautiful. It just came to me. What? Oh my gosh, when I saw that picture. Do you know that during my entire childhood, I had a picture of mountain lions over my bed. And I just remembered that until Mm -hmm. you said it. I'll try to find a picture of it. That's why you were probably Mm -hmm. pushing it deep, deep, deep down when I first brought this (laughs) up. It just came back to me. It just came back. Oh Rachel, could you God. please could you please introduce this peak white mess segment because this is one of the this is one of the most interesting ones we've ever done. Is it? Wait, the first yeah. one or the, first the second one? Yeah, one? the first one. Yeah. All right, so we've been getting a lot of peak white mess lately. Really interesting, really interesting topics when it comes to the peak white mess. And for Van, this is one of the most interesting. I would not put it in that category. To me, it's one of the most disturbing. Somebody who we can't seem to get enough of in the media, but we should. Somebody who keeps making the rounds that we really should let go of is Rachel Dolezal. And she's back in the news. And this time, maybe not for what you think it might be. But she's back in because her OnlyFans pictures have leaked. Hmm. Now, if you don't remember Rachel Dolezal, I don't know how you could not. She's a former white NAACP chapter president who made headlines a few years ago when she claimed that she identifies as black. Uh, Well, now she has an account and Uh she has some pictures that have gone viral, multiple pictures as she she's 44 years old. Not really an issue. She's 44 years old. Fine. But she's showing off her savage X Fenty lingerie. Van, you're the one who finds this so interesting. What might be so interesting about it to you? By the way, you can subscribe to her page for $9.99. No. Um, okay, first of all, a couple of things. This is wrong that people have leaked Rachel Dolezal's and, uh, OnlyFans. Okay. This is wrong. Agree. Okay. Should never okay, so, do it. So first of all, leaking somebody's OnlyFans is supposed to be paid for content. This is wrong that they leaked Rachel, Dole, Rachel Dolezal's OnlyFans. Okay. This is interesting because it's another salvo in the Rachel Dolezal conversation. 
Gotta end and, it. And I gotta be honest with you. I know I say that too much, but the Rachel Dolezal situation has never been as cut and dry as people wanted to make it seem. Why? Because there's always a gray area. Logically. So Rachel Dolezal said that she identified as black. Yes. How do we know that she didn't? Like, how do we... I, 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 I don't I, think that's the question or issue that people had. Well, the, she the, might do that. Right. So I guess my thing is, so Rachel Dolezal, she she went to Harvard, she was went to Howard, NAACP, all of that stuff, if I remember correctly, right? Yes. She, she feels she, black. Says that she's black. Don't we have to just go, okay, cool, you're black? No. I mean because it's got it can't this can't continue. Well, I agree, but at the same time, it seems as if we're a little picky or a little bit I don't really know the science behind that. I don't know the science behind anything. All I know is that I try to be supportive of people when they identify as something. Now look, I am I I do. Uh, so you support so you support her. I not really. I don't. But what I'm saying is like if you come to me right now and tell me that you identify as a different gender or you identify like I'm going to support whatever it is that you say that you identify. I want you to be able to live your best self, right? Mm -hmm. be but it seems like for me personally, it seems like I'm a little bit hypocritical if I only do it when it's not an affront to me. See, Rachel Dolezal saying that she identifies as being black, it's an affront to me because there's a shared trauma and pain and experience that goes along with being black that I don't feel Absolutely. like you can that you can I don't feel like you can opt into. You it's can't. not that it's not that I don't want you to be black because being black is awesome. It's like I don't want you to be black because you can't just turn on everything I've had to deal with. But at the same time, I, I don't know how that logic jives with some of the other things that we discuss. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not a one-to-one. -one. It's 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 sure. really it's not a one-to-one. -one, but I feel like if she says she's black, I kind of gotta like not give a fuck about it and not make it a big mm. deal. She's appropriating Anybody? for yeah, go ahead. Anybody who says that they feel black doesn't know what it means to be black. That's See, not black. That's not but, black. No, no, no. But but, but what if someone what, what if some but what if someone says I feel like a woman? Then are you uh, are you as a woman? Can you then say to them, "Hey, well, you don't really know what it feels like to be a woman." I, I'm a woman. I can tell you what it feels like to be a woman. You don't know what it feels like to be a woman. So here's the thing: what they're gonna what they're gonna tell you is, "I know what it feels like to be a they woman because like I am a woman." One. Yeah. They feel like they're a woman, and then they go through the actual change of being a woman. Not all the time. Not all the time. At all. Not like not all not all the time. Like sometimes, but not, but not all the time. So what? I, I, and by the way, I, you guys, this is a sixth grade conversation. Please give some grace. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at all. I'm not, I'm not comparing the two things in function. I'm comparing the two things societally. I'm not comparing the two things in function. And fu functionally, I'm not saying that hey, this is the same as this, because. Gender and sexuality and all of that stuff is so complicated, right? It's so complicated that it gets down to almost theoretical levels. You know, it, it's so complicated, right? It's very, very mm -hmm. nuanced. Mm -hmm. Race is a social construct that we've made mm -hmm. for the purposes of racism. Mm -hmm. There is mm -hmm. gray area to Rachel Dolezal's claim that she's black. There's just, to me, there is. It's annoying, but it's true. And even in this situation, Rachel Dolezal is out I there. I would want to know why she uh -huh. feels black. See, like, I need to, she says okay. it, she identifies. So what uh -huh. my question to her would be, if she was sitting right here, why specifically do you identify as black? If I heard that, then I could answer her more specifically. That's what I would need to hear. Is it because you say you went to an all black school or HBCU? Is it because 
you are in the NAACP and then became the president led it? Is it because you took a certain number of African-American studies classes? Is it because you lived in Africa for a certain time? I don't even know if she has, I'm just saying. I would wanna know specifically what, why do you identify as black? Because it's, it's not a lifelong thing for you. It didn't start that way for you. Well. So what was the, oh, she said she was born black? It, it. <laughs> What'd she say? It, it, she claims that for as long, I'm looking at it right now, she claims for that as long as she can remember, she always felt like she wasn't white. Now, she also has said that she's Native American. But, but. Okay, see, you're, she, you just discredited but, but look, her already. But look, all of the stuff that she's done in the NAACP and all of the African American study stuff, that's because she feels she's black. She's an that's ally. It's because she's an ally. I and I understand, I understand what you're saying. And I definitely see the argument being made of the gray area. But mm -hmm. the, but then you just throw in there that she says she's Native American. Like, I, yeah. I just. She was raised by fundamentalist Christians in the foothills of Rocky Mountain. She said from an early age, she describes being fascinated with Africa and African-American culture. When she was a teenager, her parents adopted four African-American teachers. And she says, while I was teaching my siblings about black culture, I began to feel even more connected to it myself. I began to see the world through black eyes and anything that had to do with blackness or Africa always grabbed my attention. I, look, I'm not saying that I'm not offended by Rachel Dolezal because I am. I'm just saying what's it's the great. Term, what's the term, what's the term, I can't think of it off the top of my head where it's in your blood and you feel you you feel certain a certain way because trauma exists like it's in your DNA. It's called something. I think it's part of the E. Mm, it's called right. something where like the trauma that your ancestors faith uh, dealt with. It's in your DNA. It's in your blood. And so it's the reason that today in 2022 you feel a certain way because of the trauma that your ancestors felt. <sighs> Rachel don't have that. It's called something. You that sound you, like some Dr. Umar shit. Shout out to Doc. Sounds like some Umar shit. Like you feel <laughs> epigenetics. Yeah. Thank epigenetics. you. That's exactly what it's called. Epigenetics. epigenetics. That's exactly what it is. Okay. I'm not she don't she definitely don't have that. She ain't black. But it's just interesting the grace. And even in this. So everyone's making fun of what happened to her was wrong. Yeah, sure. Rachel Dolezal has an OnlyFans. It looks as if that Rachel Dolezal is doing yet another thing to draw attention to herself. I personally believe that if she leaked her own OnlyFans, which I know a lot of people think that she did, that that's wrong. But if they took her OnlyFans pictures and put them out there, it's wrong. then they, they kind of victimized Rachel Dolezal again. I feel like again, we should have been... Again. I'm telling you, Again. I, I'll be honest with you. I feel like we should have at least been willing to have the conversation. Get her on the podcast. Have I will. You do I, it. I, feel, I feel like we should have at least be able to have the conversation. Because once I'm again, take a sick day. I want to give people space to identify as whatever they want to identify as. But I just want to know what, the, what, how, how do you do that? Like, I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to, I don't consider her to be black. I don't. But I'm not gonna but kick her in she, her ass. But you want it. But you want to get. If she wants to the space to be black, you want to give go, that to her. Go, and go, I'm sure hey, that she's not alone. Yeah. I'm sure. And what? Okay. Let that catch on. Let it catch it's gonna on. Gonna be niggas everywhere. <laughs> we got three different topics here on the nigga word. We got. Oh, I gotta play this. Real quick, Donnie, give me the. I'm with, we got three different topics on the word nigga, white people still not learning, but I gotta let y'all hear this. This is an actual, the video you can see it on the internet, but this is actually a salesman that comes to a black man's house. This is caught on the ring camera. Listen to this. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Hey, sorry to bother you. I'm Fernando. I work at Peak Energy. We're a few doors down. We're in 1845. Okay. So we do solar around here. We're just coming around talking to neighbors. Uh, sorry, dude. Neighbors. I apologize, man. I know. <laughs> no, man, that wasn't even... Uh... <laughs> Fans are laughing. 
Um, <laughs> I, I think this was fake. You do? I do. It could be. I really think, and I'm not. I'm surprised more people aren't talking about this. I mm -hmm. think this was a gag. I, to I'm go be viral with you. on social media, I don't if believe it, it. If it is, because if it is, then the brother who is in the sketch needs to be called before the congregation. <laughs> I do. We never see him. Yeah. I I mean, and then like, I guess the energy company that's in the area or that he said he worked for, like, they're like, we don't work in that area. He wasn't even wearing a shirt. I have, 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 have they said that he doesn't work for them? Yeah. Okay. Well, then it's probably fake. And that's when I saw it and I was like, I think this is just like pink solar or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They said that they don't know who this person is and he's not even wearing a shirt from their company. So yeah. I don't, I don't believe You think that. it's fake? If it's fake, I we can't. Fake. Okay. So look, I, I'm, I'm all good for a good skit. Y'all, we can't do the traumatizing black people skit by having salespeople say the N-word stuff. I can't. I got to draw the line. I'm, that's bad. But that's you thought bad it was skit. real. I did. I'm willing to believe anything, And it might though. be. And it might you, be. Do you realize that, look, if you're saying that it's fake, uh, you know, I'm willing to believe anything now when it comes to white people in the N-word. <laughs> I am. There's no, there's no context in which you could tell me that a white person said the N-word, and I wouldn't believe it. If someone told me right now, hey, my wife went into labor, and I took, and we went over to the hospital, and the baby was delivered, and the doctor smacked the baby and said, oh, this nigger can take a licking. Like, I would believe that that happened. I would. There's no context with the white people saying the N-word I wouldn't believe. They fucked up every way you could fuck up. So funny. All right, mailbag, Johnny, go. <laughs> mailbag time. Time to read your letters and then we'll reply to them. Oh, it's mailbag time. Write us with your queries and we'll chime in. All right. The first one is from Damar Samantra on Reddit. They ask, what is a conspiracy theory that you believe to be true? Oh. Right? You got no. one? No. I got one. Go. I'm willing to believe that the moon landing never happened. I feel like I've heard you say that. I Have am. you talked about this before? I, I, I'm not saying that I full on believe it but I'm willing to believe that the US faked the moon landing why lots of reasons man lots of things never went back to the moon you know what I mean like it, uh, the it, what's the question about the wind po po politically the, 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 you know, the wind blowing, the flag, whatever, politically, the fact that the, the space race was was existing simultaneously to the arms race and what that stuff did, how it allowed the United States to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars because everybody has such national pride. And I'm, just, I'm just willing to believe, I'm willing to believe that we never I'm not saying that it's true. If you if like if you if you for a million dollars, we went to the moon. If you if it was a million dollars on the table, but I'm willing to believe the conspiracy theory that we never went to the moon. Mm. You don't have okay. one that you believe in. Bigfoot. I fuck with Bigfoot. I think he's real though. See, I don't even think that that's like a conspiracy theory. I think Bigfoot's real. I just don't think that we, I just don't think that we, uh, we made a Bigfoot. I think that Bigfoot's out there, you know, and and I, I, I or or he was out there. Or he was out there. That's what uh, he was out there. I love Bigfoot content. You ever see Harry and the Hendersons? Of course, you didn't see it. That's actually what I have seen. Oh! <laughs> I love Harry and the Hendersons. I love Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> like Harry and the Hendersons, is so. Sad at the end 
when when they have to make him leave and he doesn't want to leave Harry and the Henderson's good like I love I love Bigfoot content so Bigfoot okay Bigfoot's good okay another one Donnie come on all right next one is from Danielle Frailing on Instagram she asks what trend went out of style that you wish came back today the little military things on your shoulders remember that when they had the little remember the, they had the little military things on your shoulders in like 2008 2009 what do you call those epaulets or something i have no idea you don't know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about i just don't know what they're called remember that, you remember that era remember that era when the, when we had those on your shoulders and the shirt you don't remember that era yes no i'm agreeing with you i just don't remember what they were called i used to love those i had several different shirts with those what trend? They've all come back. I keep thinking style, and I'm like, all of the style ones have come back. Mm, I can't think on questions today. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're I'm failing. Because fa all I can think is style. And I'm like, oh, all the shit's come back. I, I want those to Donnie, come back. You have one? Don you want to answer Donnie, for did you me? Have, did you have any of those shirts? Mm, no, I, I didn't. Um, okay. But I would like those shirts from like the, I feel like they are starting to come back. Shirts from like the 60s that were like tight and uh, huh? they, they were like um, like a uh, kind of like a, a, a cotton vibe to them. It was like a, um, a collar shirt that's tight, short sleeves. Um, I'm describing it and I'm picturing it, but I'm not describing it well. You're describing a polo. So what? <laughs> no. It's a collar. No, let him keep, keep going. It's a specific. It's a tall, okay, it's a collar shirt that's. Polo. It's a collar shirt that's like, tight. You know, in the um, the is it like psychedelic TV movie. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Those yeah, 60 that's... style shirts. You can wear it with a chain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're polos, Donnie, but they're. I can see you rocking that. Yeah, that, yeah. niggas, mad niggas wear those though. If you're an activist, you wear those shirts. That's the kind of shit that activists wear. Activists yeah, like to dress like they're from the season. But you know, I'm talk, I know what you're talking about. Like, sometimes they got the little V in the front, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, like yep. like that. Yeah, they got the collar. Yeah, but mad people wear those, though. And by the way, yeah, with your everything hair, comes back. with your hair, that's the type of shit you should be wearing. For sure. Yeah, I got to find me one or a couple. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get you some. I'm going to get you some of those. What size, what size shirt are you, Donnie? A medium. A good medium. A good medium. What does a good medium mean? What's that? Like a, a medium that's not too big. I'm not a I'm I'm kind of a, a slender guy. So um Ooh, and I feel like those have to be kind of form fitting. Ooh, I'm kind of a slender guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a weight problem. I don't have I don't have flappy titties, whatever. Move on to the next one. <laughs> All right. Next one is uh from Cantaloupe Steve on Reddit. Cantaloupe Steve asks, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make when moving in with your partner? Everything. Yeah, man. <laughs> Move on. Move on. Everything. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last one. Ty Comedy on Instagram asks, I feel like this is an easy answer. Easy. What's easy worse? Bubble guts or migraine? Bubble guts. Million Bubble percent. guts. Migraine like, debilitating. You can lose your shit. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, can I be honest with you? I prefer diarrhea. But here's the thing. With, with like a bubble guts, it's rumbling. Diarrhea, like you got to get there fast. With a migraine, you know what I mean, like, and you might not make it. But let me let me ask you this question though: Do you prefer diarrhea or do you prefer taking like a normal shit? Is this a, an actual question? Yeah, like, well, do you prefer diarrhea or do you prefer I, having a, like a normal shit? I prefer a normal boo boo. Donnie, what about you? Uh, it depends. See, I feel what? like so, there, there, See? there's some kind of satisfaction when there's just a whole lot at once. Something that about is, it, and you're I fully. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and you're so fully disgusting. eliminated. Like you feel, yeah. so disgusting. and you, and all because like when out. you emptied out, right? Because when you take when when you take a regular shit, you can get and you can take and you can be like, God ah, damn, you know, I feel like I didn't get it all, and you can yeah. feel still for like, but when you with the diarrhea, all the gas, all the water, all of this is just out. 
Assuming you don't have it's to push. one. Sometimes Usually, you don't have to push. Sometimes you don't okay, have to push. It, it just, it just, it come, it just like okay, comes straight out, and then like you feel. Once. Well, I mean, like if usually you, if, you have to keep going. Well, I mean, here's the thing. When I'm, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the frequency here. I'm talking about the methodology of the actual going to the That's bathroom. The, it's absolutely I disgusting prefer, to me. I prefer to be just get it all out so I could go play basketball. It's like you know a rage. I mean? It's raging, and I don't like that. <laughs> it's angry, and it's it's just aggressive. All right. Uh, do you have an unexpected ally of the week? You I better. do. My unexpected ally of the week is. Marjorie Taylor Greene's husband. He has filed for divorce. And not that I wish divorce on anybody, but it's one less person supporting Marjorie Taylor Greene. And that is a win in my book. I bet you that nigga's all kinds of racist, though. <laughs> to have That's been with why her? they're unexpected. Or maybe unexpected. he can't take it. Maybe, maybe he's had enough. We don't know. Irreconcilable difference. Is that what it is? Yeah. It- irretrievably no they said no i thought it was irreconcilable differences no it's the marriage is irretrievably broken okay maybe he's had enough of her shit look at this beautiful mountain lion um my unexpected ally of the week is roger maris jr who is the son of roger maris who used to have the uh major league baseball single season home run record okay 61 home runs roger maris two-time al mvp uh, fantastic movie directed by Billy Crystal. Barry Pepper as Roger Maris. Thomas Jane as Mickey Mantle. The name of the movie is 61. Go watch it. Uh, Roger Maris said that Aaron Judge, who is now a Yankee that is belting his way uh, past 61 homers, it's like he is aiming at the true home run record because Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and Barry Bonds cheated their way to the record. Mm. I like Roger Maris and what he said because it made me go watch videos of Barry Bonds when he was a goddamn behemoth. And I had so much fun on the plane ride over watching Barry Bonds, a fucking mutant human with a twig in his hands, destroy baseballs and hit them 9,000 feet. I hadn't watched... Barry in so long, he was unfucking believable. And I have no problem with it. He was unbelievable. And I hadn't thought about it. I was like, this guy talking shit about it. I went back and I watched it. Just do you remember the year that he hit like 370? He hit like 370, all kinds of walks, fucking like 50 homers or something. They just wouldn't pitch to him. They walked a run in because Barry was waiting. He was just And you don't care how he did it. I don't give a fuck about that. (laughs) (laughs) I I wish I did. I understand why (laughs) hardcore, I love baseball. I understand why hardcore baseball fans care about that because the numbers in baseball mean so much. So it's based around the numbers. And if you skew the numbers based on an unfair advantage, people go, ooh, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I used to love watching them just fucking just just listen to the ball coming off the bat when Barry hit Barry hit a, a, a ridiculous homer. You guys go watch this. Barry steps up to the plate in Yankee Stadium and just destroys a ball. Just destroys a ball out to right field. The sound of it was fucking chaotic. It was so fun to watch. So thank you, Roger so Barry Jr. I mean, yeah, what's your unexpected ally of the week? Is Roger Maris Jr. is my unexpected ally of the week because in hating on Barry Bonds, he made me go watch Barry Bonds, and it was <laughs> okay. a whole lot of fun. I love it. Bring back niggas who are 270 with 8% body fat that can hit the baseball 1,000 feet. I and take it. supplements. That's going to do it for us. Take thing caps off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys. <laughs>